All right, well, welcome all Facebook fans to Boost Biz Ed. Uh, we're here at our new location in Westminster uh, to provide actionable education. So we're going to provide networking opportunities. So if you can make it into the room, you get to shake hands, pass cards, talk before and after. Uh, but for all those people that can't make it here in the room, um, we have the live stream so you can at least see the presentation materials. So we encourage that you come visit so you get both sides of what we do here. So our goal is actual education, so at the end of today, you can take something away from this and implement in your business or personal life today to make yourself more gooder than you were before you started. <laughs> Curse laughs. I don't have the laugh track today. <laughs> All right, so uh, today we have a great speaker. Um, we have Jane Sanders. Um, so she, oh, this is a long title. Your hands will tell you how scientific hand analysis influences personal and professional success. So how does this relate to your success? That is so confusing. But after <laughs> uh, an MBA and 25 years in the corporate world, Jane Sanders began a search for more meaningful, joyful work by helping people in deeper ways. She found scientific hand analysis and her life has not been the same since. Uh, it went from great to fabulous and now she wakes up every day inspired about her life and fulfilled by her work. Using hand analysis and purpose coaching, Jane's passion is to help other leaders, professionals, and business owners feel the same way. How powerful is scientific hand analysis? Forbes wrote an article about Jane and her work, so she published. It is so accurate, profound, and life-changing. Jane is a master hand analyst, teacher, and purpose coach. So with that, let's we'll give a large round of applause to Jane Sanders. It does. It sounds like a lot more. Good job. <laughs> Are you ready for something a little different? Yes. All right. All right. I don't know what that's going to be, but no. <laughs> so um, Paul alluded to my story. I am MBA, past corporate. I've had three careers before this one. I never knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. Anybody, was anybody like that? I felt weird because of that. It made me feel stupid. All my friends knew what they were going to do, and I'm like, I don't know. What so I just went into business because I thought, well, at least I can make some money while well, doing what I don't know what to do. Um, and I was very successful, but after a few years in sales and marketing, and I looked at the next promotion I was going to get, I didn't want it. And I'm like, I just, something's wrong here. So I switched to head of sales and marketing for a smaller firm calling on the Fortune 500. That was fun for a few years. But again, I hit that same wall of the word and knowing that there was something else I was supposed to do, but I just couldn't figure it out. And I was doing the research. You know, I worked with a career coach. I read What Colors Your Parachute and all those Find Your Ideal Work books, and it just wasn't enough for me for some reason. So then I started my own professional speaking firm, calling it on the 500. That lasted for 20 years, and as Margie knows, it's not easy to keep a you know, speaking business going for that long. It's a tough industry. And I had a lot of fun for a long time, but dang it. Again, after 12 to 15 years, I just hit that wall again, and I was getting bored. I didn't really want to do it anymore. And as my heart pulled away from it, so did the revenue. But I didn't want to invest in it because I didn't want to do it anymore. But I didn't know what else I wanted to do, so I was just in this downward spiral. And then got one of those proverbial wake-up calls, otherwise known as cosmic tubifores that whacked me across the head. Both of my parents died within three months of each other. And it was like, whoa, okay, life is short. I need to figure this out. So I stopped marketing what was left of my speaking business and started Googling, literally, how do I find my life purpose? And I found a few things and I was poking around a little bit. Nothing was really grabbing me. And after a few months, saw a headline, a headline popped up and it said, Discover your innate life purpose. <gasps> this is like too good to be true. <laughs> Clicked on it and saw hand analysis. I, you know, come on, I'm serious here. I really want my purpose. And then I saw the word scientific. And for the moment, that one word appeased what I call my anal MBA skepticism. So I listened to the teleseminar. It was pretty credible, and I really wanted my purpose. So I got a hand analysis, and it changed my life. 
I was so inspired from that day forward. Did I know I wanted to be a hand analyst? No. That took some more work, but I knew if I did what they told me to do, which is take action on the information that was in my hands, which was so accurate, it blew my mind. Even the things I hadn't thought about before resonated. And I've been on, you know, personal growth path for 20 years before I got this. And it was like all there and more in an hour. I was flabbergasted. So even the things I hadn't thought about made sense. And it just explained why I would get tripped up on the things I'd gotten tripped up, why I didn't like the work I had done before, what I, why I liked what I liked, what, you know, it just explained everything about who I was, why my life went the way it did, and why I was stuck. Um, and then I started taking action, and just doors started opening, clarity started coming, I was kind of led to the right people, and within a few months I was like, oh, duh, I want to help people feel like I do. But even before I knew I wanted to do this work, I was loving my life and felt inspired and knew I was on my way. So that's when I decided to actually do this work. I've been studying it for, um, I guess, six years now. I'm as highly certified as possible. And that's level four, which means I'm teaching it. And now I'm a master, which is just the sheer number of hand analysis that I've done. Um, so there's, I don't know, at my level, maybe 100 or 200 in the world. So it's growing quickly. Um, because it's so accurate and you know I didn't publish the article just to clarify I met the reporter at a conference and did a little mini reading like I'll do a couple of days many I fit in and we'll stay after to do a few more um, and it blew her mind and she just said if you do the full thing and it makes sense to me I think it's accurate and right I did an article about it and she did so um, she, she kept promise and that Forbes article has really been amazing Anyway, there, you know, we talk about purpose because that's the main thing this work reveals, your innate life purpose, how you're meant to make a difference in the world, the gifts you have to help you fulfill that purpose, the blind spots that are keeping you from it and are tripping you up in different areas of your life, pretty much everything about who you are and why you're here. So, you know, I've done a lot of reading, as you can imagine, about purpose and so many studies and so many books are out there. Actually, I thought somebody's going to ask. So I put, like, here's just the first, what showed up on the first page of life purpose books. And what the research consistently says is that it always covers one concept, that true, lasting inner joy comes from meaning in our lives and fulfillment, not from money, not from success it's from meaning and that's what this does. fulfillment is the word that I use but it's the same thing as meaning and that's what this gave me and um, gives my clients so and that's what happens from being on purpose I truly believe that being in alignment with your innate purpose and using your gifts is the only way you're going to get to that more consistent joy and fulfillment and meaning all the good stuff so let's have a little audience interaction. What, what do you think it feels like when you're not in alignment with your purpose? If you're not doing what you're actually meant to do in some form? Confused. Confused, yes, absolutely. Stressed out. Stressed out. Thank you, Karen. Probably hard. It's hard, yeah. It's mm -hmm. like beating your head against a wall. Yeah, Kim, frustrated. Is frustrated. Yeah. That was my word. D dull, frustrated, <laughs> angry. Yep. Odd, that, yeah. Been there, done that. Don't want to do it anymore. Right. right. Bored. No. You know. Bored. Yes. Um, so, and people have all kinds, you know, relationship issues, money issues, that boredom, they're frustrated. Um, and a sense of, of, it's that not fulfilling your purpose. I'm here, so. Yeah. Like something's I, I missing. I want to give something. Yeah. And because we're all yeah. givers, I think, is what really, it, it's that human need. Absolutely. Oh gosh, please just plug me in something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's, and you feel off track. You know yeah, something's like missing. That, it almost makes you dizzy in a way. Yeah. Like so it's that off track feeling like something's not just right. Yeah. Um, and it just, it, it's yicky. And all those things in hand analysis we call student paths. Um, because every marking in the hands has both what's called a master path and a student path. 
Master Path goes with the flow and makes it much easier to live in alignment with your purpose. Um, student path doesn't feel so good. It's all those yucky feelings that we just talked about. And when we're on the student path, which we are every day of something, it makes it harder to live in alignment with our purpose. So knowing what those master paths look like so you know what to strive for, and then knowing where you get tripped up so you can take action on them, and that's what I did. That's what I said when I took action on the information. I started taking action on my big student paths because nobody can be on the master path 100% of the time. We're human. Works in progress, right? But every little step that you take to get there, at least temporarily, it's sort of like you're rewarded for. You know, it gets you going in the right direction. It kind of gets that energy going in the right direction. So the science behind this is that the lines in your hands actually mimic the neural pathways in your brain. Neurologists are getting involved in this. Geneticists, because there are similarities in families. I'm also a law of attraction coach in addition to a purpose coach, and I find similarities in groups. Birds of a feather, you know, flock together is how that ends. Um, so it is really amazing. The gentleman that created the system spent 40 years, talk about anal, putting this database together. Um, 40 years and analyzed over 30,000 hands. That's how reliable the system is. A neurosurgeon, that actually the head of neurosurgery at Stanford, wrote the foreword to the book. He's now retired, but he used this work with his patients. Um, I mean, this gives me goosebumps when I talk about how accurate this stuff is. It's just, the, the main word that clients use is freaky, you know, because it is so accurate. It's like, I remember one, manager in Baltimore, actually. No, it was Virginia. Um, he goes, how do you know that about me? I'm like, well, it's in your hands. Well, I know, but how do you know that about me? <laughs> Your brain is putting it in your hands. Because the cool thing about this is can do, I have clients in Singapore. It can be done remotely. And you're like, how can you do that from these prints, which I'm going to pass around in a moment. But I have to wait, because once these go out, I live <laughs> <laughs> Right? And it answers those and, and before I forget, it is science. There are no predictions to it. There's no, you know, fortune telling. It's not palm reading. There's some of the same terminology, but um, I tell people there's no predictions other than one big one that I make with 100% certainty. I don't care how good your life is now. You take action on those student paths, it only gets better. Done. Um, so it, it answers those questions about, you know, why am I here? Who am I? Why does this keep showing up in my life? It might look different, but I know it's the same poo-poo, mm -hmm. right? Um, all that kind of stuff. And it seems to serve people, certainly who are in my position. They just know there's something else, and they're not on it. And life's starting to give them harder and harder kicks in the butt, you know, which is how it works when we're not on purpose and we know it. Um, you know, we just can't be floating through life and not be on purpose and not trying. That's just... I feel the way the universe works. Um, this can even work for teams because the fingerprint system, there's a numerical system behind that so I can put a matrix together and then flush out the purpose of the overall team. And there's a lot of buy-in for it because it came from their hands. They don't second guess it by, you know, if you go to a purpose workshop and you've created your own purpose, there's always that, is that right? You know, is that, this is etched in there. Um, what I really want to do is grow this big enough where I can have a nonprofit arm and then have other hand analysts with me and, for example, do hand analysis, like for returning veterans who are killing themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that mine of them, some of them, it might help, you know, if they had that lighthouse to shoot for. Um, you know, troubled teens, and people do get this for teens and kids in the college that don't know what to study, they don't know where to go. Man, if I had known this when I was in high school, it would have helped so much. Um, the youngest person I have analyzed was three. Wow. Um, because your fingerprints you're born with, they're formed th 14 to 16 mm -hmm. weeks in utero and never change. Or FBI being deep duty, right? <laughs> so um, those never change. Everything else in your hands can change. As you change your thoughts or behaviors, it changes the neural pathways, and it can show up in your hands. It may not, but when I was going through, for example, um, level two, which was a year-long program, 
we were taking our prints every quarter because when you dive that deep into what's in your own hands, you're going to transform whether you're ready or not. You know, you're going to go through growth and transformation, and it was little things were showing. You wouldn't see it, but we were studying it so we could see the little changes in our hands. It's like, whoa, this stuff is amazing. It is, what's the F word? Freaky. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, some of the basics. Master and student path, which I mentioned. Every marking has both. Nobody can be on the master path 100% of the time. So, look at your hands for a second. The longer the line, any major line, so usually there's three major lines. One going kind of across the top, one in, through the middle, and then one around the base of your thumb. The longer the line, or the bigger the area of your hand, the more energy and the more time you spend in whatever that line represents. So for example, no matter which hand? Does, yeah, either hand, <laughs> either hand, good question. Generally, Right hand is what we show out to the world, business stuff. Left hand is inner, personal, family. Now if you're left handed, some of the information changes, but this guy, I'm telling you, his name is Richard Unger, was so detailed, most of that's already in the database. So it's just already there. I mean, my binder is this thick um, of all the details. Also, the more curved the line, so this top line is your heart line, and we're going to talk about that in more detail, but the more curved there is in that line, the more outwardly emotive you are and the more you're involved in your relationships and you know, the more your heart is on your sleeve. Um, and if you have a straight heart line, it doesn't mean you don't have emotion, it just means that you don't put it out there as much. <laughs> and you don't dwell on your relationships as much as somebody that has a longer and a curvier line. So curvy means more emotion, straight means more analytical, more logical. Um, fingerprints, I mentioned fingerprints, they stay the same. And a lot of information comes from the fingerprints. The foundation of your purpose comes from the fingerprints. Um, something we call life lesson, which is the biggest tripping point. Um, it's the key, we call it the key to your hand, because if you take steps to work on that life lesson, it's enormously, positively impactful in your life. It's our greatest obstacle, the life lesson. And I've never had somebody go, hmm, that doesn't make any sense. They're always like, oh yeah, you know. I, but they might not know how impactful it is, but they know it's there. And learning how impactful it is is really empowering. And then also life school, which is kind of the foundation of who you are and some of your natural skills and talents, as well as some of the learning you need in order to fulfill your life purpose. That's why they call it school. I got that, and nobody even said that. <laughs> so, um, and it can be done remotely because of these prints. So I'm going to pass these around now. I also, I'm going to pass around um, my, this is for my list. So I want to be very transparent about that. Um, usually what I do, are you, did you ever sign up for my list? I just wondered if you could. We, we've just done emails back and okay. forth. Okay, so weekly I send out an email that has an image of a marking or I talk about it and show it or both so you can see if you have it and then learn a little bit about yourself. So people have a lot of fun with him and then I include something personal at the bottom that also has my speaking engagements on the side and it's a one click unsubscribe. So if you'd like to try it, sign this. If you don't like it, one click and you're out. And if you don't even want to try it, don't sign it. it won't hurt my feelings. Um, okay, and then these are my little handouts. Here's for Karen, for me, I'm showing off that I remember everybody's name. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah. I was going to say that. Well done. Well done. I mean, I, I tried to do the beginning, but that was impressive 20 minutes later. Forgot the outliers. Okay, so I mentioned we were going to talk about heart lines. So that's that top line that, oh, too bad you guys. So I'm, can, how close can I get so they can see what, mm -hmm. pretty, can they see a lot of detail there? Yes. So this is how we do hand analysis, is through prints like this, because we can see much more from these prints, all this little detail, unless somebody screws them up, which is very rare, by the way. 
maybe one percent of the time I have to have somebody redo their prints. Um, that's it. So the the uppermost horizontal line is your heart line, which indicates your relationship style, how you communicate in relationship, how you express love and affection, and how you want love and affection expressed to you. They always start underneath the pinky, so that's the origination point, is at the edge of the hand below the pinky. And then it goes across, and where it ends tells me your relationship style. Now if you look down below, there's four little images. Those are the four basic types of heart lines, but of course it's never that easy, right? Sometimes, but my hand is a mix of two, so let me explain that. This is my left hand, by the way. Um, so if you go up above under the pinky and follow it across, it curves up but ends underneath my middle fingers. Everybody see that on the print? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you go down below, the one that's closest to that is the one on the far right called a hermit. Does anybody think they have a hermit? John? So, here's, I'll explain what a hermit means, because people are like, well, I don't want to be a hermit. Yeah. <laughs> so, I love my hermit, first of all. It explains so much about me. So, a hermit, and this is top line, I could spend 15 minutes on each top, on each heart line, but a hermit is somebody who um, keeps their deepest feelings close in until they trust, can be very loyal, sometimes to a fault, and stay too long somewhere. Um, they, their alone time is not just enjoyable, it's required for them to be the best they can be. And their freedom, that is the ultimate. They don't want to feel possessed, clung to, squished, obligated, anything like that. Hermits really need their freedom. On the master path, they're very reliable, high integrity, um, and again, top line, top line. Student path is trust issues especially when somebody doesn't do what they said they were going to do because hermits just don't get it. <laughs> John just went, <laughs> they don't get it because they're so reliable that when somebody flakes out, they're just like, your mama didn't raise you right. I mean, what? <laughs> they just don't understand it and they won't trust again because of that. They'll just wait for you to do that again. Um, now, how this helped me so much is like in high school, when a boyfriend started getting really clingy, I was gone. I was out of there and I thought something was really wrong with me because all the girls love that. When the boyfriends got real, you know, possessive and wanted to be with them all the time, it just smothered me. I thought, man, I'm just, something's really wrong with me. This explained everything. All the decisions I've made, the drive I had to be an entrepreneur, the fact that I'm pretty much un unemployable because I need my freedom so much. I mean, it's just, it was like, oh God. And that's just like 2% of what's in your hands. So the other piece, if you look under my ring finger, there's an angled line that shoots up toward my index finger. Can you see that? That's a piece of a big heart. A classic big heart, if you look down below, starts under the pinky and goes all the way to the index finger. And this should all be on the left hand? Either one. Okay. Either hand. Well, I've got better lines than my right hand. Okay. Why is that? Uh, because it's what you show out in the world, and you probably use it more, and it works it more, right? So, everybody's hands are different. They go, oh, they're, they're the same, but nah, if you look really close, they're very different. So, a big heart. Who thinks they have big heart? They yeah, have big heart, yes. Big heart and hermit are the two most common ones. So, a big heart is just that. Nurturing, connection. Um, the big thing about big hearts is they just really want to help people. So much so that the student path is overgiving and being what we call receiving challenged. You know, somebody says, So, Margie, can I help? No, 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 I got it, I got it. Or not asking for help. So, I always counsel my big hearts when somebody offers to help, whether you think you need it or not, say yes and ask for help more often. So, remember, I'm a law of attraction coach. When you open up to receiving more, the universe is going to send you more to receive. That's the way it works. So um, I'm half and half, hermit and big heart. And actually, since I started doing this work, this print was taken probably four years ago, that curve of the end of my hermit that's underneath my middle finger has gone on and is now all the way to my index finger. So somebody might look at that and say, well, you're all big heart. 
Now the etched part of the hermit is still deeper. It's still, you know, also you have to look and see how it, what pops out. So I'm still half and half, or maybe, you know, a little bit more on the big heart. Because all I do all day long is help people, right? As a hand analyst and a coach, that's all I'm doing. Um, other than when I'm doing my marketing and stuff. So um, now there's the, you look down at the little um, image, romantic idealist. That's a pretty straight line and it goes at least past the halfway point between the middle finger and the index finger. So it's a long line. Any romantic idealist, it's the most rare line, or the least common, I should say. And a romantic idealist, first of all, it's straight. So it's in the head, right? Thinking, logical people, romantic idealists analyze their emotions and their relationships. They think about them a lot, which makes them very considerate in relationship. They can make really great partners because they're thinking about it all the time. They um, love long, deep, meaningful conversations. Now, I do too, but I'm not a romantic idealist. So you can see these are not mutually exclusive. Everybody's got pieces you know, of all of them, but you'll have dominant characteristics. Um, and they, uh, hermits and romantic idealists, their favorite way to express love and affection is through acts of service, doing things for somebody. Doesn't mean they can't use terms of endearment or physical affection, but big hearts can be much more romantic you know, every type of um, showing affection. And the student path for romantic idealists is being in their head too much and not letting themselves feel their emotions. And then the fourth one um, is passionate, and that's exactly what that means. Passionates are very, pa unless they're frozen, which can happen, they can get their passion squished out when they were kids. Um, very passionate about life, usually very outgoing, can be a lot of fun to be around. A little dramatic, which is partly what makes them fun to be around. <laughs> Um, and passionates want what they want, and they want it now, damn it. And they'll figure out how to get it. And on the master path, passionates model for others how to ask for what you want, which is what everybody needs to do instead of dropping hints or you know, being passive aggressive or being a little manipulative, which would be passionates on the student path and being over uh, dramatic or getting angry when you don't get what you want. Um, but passionates are really fun to be around and very passionate in their lives and in their relationships as well. So those are the four heart line types, top line. And does everybody kind of know what their heart line is? Ben? I think so. When it shoots up, is that what is indicative of the, the passionate line? How it's well, doing the, that? Well, oh, sorry. The passionate needs to, it does have a more dramatic curve. Mm -hmm. So hand analysis is very literal. Passion, passionate can be very dramatic. A passionate heart line has a more dramatic curve. It just needs to end just inside the middle finger. And sometimes, at the last minute, it looks like it's heading up there, and then it takes a turn toward the index finger that's literally called a passionate, acting like a big heart. And it's genuine, though. It's just that they've learned when they were little to get the love they needed. They needed to be loving and be supportive and help others. And so they're kind of half and half. Thanks. Um, any, it's hard to tell. Yeah. yeah you're, they probably they split off. off. <laughs> yeah. They probably split off. Are so. This all from the same line? Yeah, this is all it's, it's just, it's this all line. This, line this right is here. something different. So relax your hand a little bit. So you, you are. Don't see <laughs> well, no, you're a hermit and big heart. This is something else. Yeah, and Lee, hermit. 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 Oh. Yeah, <laughs> hermit. I think this is passionate acting like big heart. So you've got three different styles. And oh, lovely. Um, well, here's, here's the good thing about having three different styles is that you're very flexible. And you can um, shape shift and meet somebody else in their relationship style and it's genuine because it's part of your design. Mm -hmm. The challenge with it is that it's confusing to people that you're in a relationship with because they don't know which is gonna show up. You know, one minute you're snuggle bug Margie and the next minute you're stiff arm because you need your alone time. And they're like, what do I do? This is true. And it's like, it's not you, it has nothing to do with them, and that's all you need to tell them. And it can be confusing to you as well, because you will respond differently to the same stimulus on a different day, but you don't know why. Yeah. Now you know why. Mm -hmm. You cannot control what heart line you're in, in any particular moment. So it's like, okay, I'm not cuckoo, I just have three different heart lines. Right? right? Some of my clients have all four. Wow. So, anyway. Um, big heart, 
big heart, uh, passionate. This is passionate, acting like a big heart, and that's passionate. Oh, that's yeah. Passionate. Passionate. Okay. Passionate. Oh. <laughs> what we see, because they go inside. It depends on what's that. See, that's a pretty dramatic curve, and it's closer to this finger than this finger. Mm -hmm. huh. See that? Yes. Okay. So, anyway, um, guys, do you know what you are? Well, now I need to be validated. So, we're already segregated over here. It's interesting that, um, well, there were empty seats over here, by the way. That's one of the words that people use is validation. And some people get this because they think they're on purpose, but they're not sure, and that validation gives them that confidence and permission to just go for it, to just really step into it. So, Hermit. All right, so see, you have a piece of big heart, but you're Hermit and big heart just like me, exactly. Yeah, this is what I show the world about, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Paul, big heart, classic big heart. Um, oh, you have a double heart line. You are much more sensitive than you show. You have a double heart line. He's also a smart ass. They all got that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's how yeah, I hide so it. This one's Hermit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So people do hide their sensitivity behind humor. Um, sometimes he has a double heart. <coughs> he's, he's, he's got a lot of heart. I mean, literally, it's so it's so literal hand analysis. And the circles are gift markings. Now gift markings are a big deal. Okay. So and I saw a gift marking on your hand. Um, oh. Just when you were giving your introduction, I, I'm telling you, I can't help but look at hands. Oh, wow. just, I can't stop myself. How many people are afraid to show you their hands? Some guys are. <laughs> <laughs> women. You know, I've had one or two women. Um, but I don't mind. That's their, you know, that's okay. I mean, I've had much worse than that. So, I mean, I decided, first of all, okay, I'm just, beep, 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 beep. Um, I get so passionate about this. But a lot of coaches, counselors, therapists are hand analysts but they keep it under the radar because they're afraid people are gonna think they're cuckoo. Right. I'm like, I am shouting this from the rooftops. I think it's so amazing, I don't care what people think. And I did, at a networking event, a woman came up and said, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a purpose coach and a hand analyst, what's that? And I gave her the quick little thing and she goes, oh, voodoo. I said, no, 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 it's science, you know, blah, 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 and she goes, black magic. And I'm like, we're done talking. I yeah. literally just said, we're done talking. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to waste my yeah. time with that. Yeah. I don't care. So, um, I got lots more fish to fry. Many <laughs> <laughs> people to help. So, which means she's scared to know herself. That's what that means. Because this is this has got it all. All right, so the circles are gift markings. Gift markings are indications of extra potential talent in different areas. And they're very important for three reasons. One, they um, are rare. So if you take every human on the planet, far more than half do not have a gift marking. So if you have one, it's a big deal. Doesn't mean they can't be amazing people. Matter of fact, many CEOs have no gift markings. And here's why, because gift markings are a double-edged sword because they have student paths too. So it adds more student paths to your design, which means more life complications and more distractions. CEO, the fewer distractions, the more clear they can just snap off decisions and go. Um, and it doesn't mean there's not CEOs without a bunch of gift markings, but, um, and then, so that's the second reason they're important, because they have student paths too. And the third reason they're important is they help explain the how. You know, the gifts you have to help you make the difference you're meant to make in the world. Help you fulfill your purpose. So, um, you know, it's like everybody wants gift markings, but hand analysts, we're like, I wish that would go away. I wish that one would go away. <laughs> because if you have the marking, you definitely have the gift and the student path. But the marking can go away, which means you still have the gift, but not the student path. So we're like, don't give me another student path. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, so let me explain a couple of these. Well, first of all, let me explain the other lines. The headline is, is how you think, how you process information, how you want information presented to you, how you make decisions, things like that. And every little thing hanging off of it or going across it means something. Everything in the hands means something. Every line, the shape, 
where your fingers are set on the palm, how your fingers are related to each other. Um, fate lines are how you approach work and job and projects and career. So I have I've pointed out three fate lines. Can you see that there? Mm -hmm. So that means several things. It means that I've had multiple careers. It means that I'm a multitasker, and all those are true. Um, and one starts up later in the hand, not at the bottom, which is called a late bloomer, which means a career change later in life. Lifeline is your lifeline. It can be a little bit of health stuff, mostly family stuff, things like that. And here's the question that usually comes up. What does a short lifeline mean? <laughs> so the length of a lifeline. Okay, which this is important. One, which one is this? That's the one that goes around the thumb. Oh, around the thumb. Mm -hmm. I don't have one. Oh, <laughs> Margie is a zombie. Uh oh, that's so not good news. The length. The length of a lifeline. Oh, I do. <laughs> Did you know that? It's that one right there. Oh yeah, it is. Has nothing to do with how long you're gonna live. Well, that one. Come on. You heard it here. I want her life. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Children. <laughs> so the length of a lifeline has nothing to do with how long, how long your life is. Nothing. My lifeline on this actually bumps into a fate line and stops. Can you see that if you track across my fate line, my lifeline? Right below where I've got it pointed out, it stops there. A short lifeline is called a gada 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 which means that it's shiny object syndrome on steroids. It's like, okay, I gotta do this, pro oh wait, I gotta answer this email, oh wait, I gotta send this email, oh wait, I gotta empty the dishwasher. So it's ADD. Sort of. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't have comments, ADD, so but I, I do have it. Oh yeah, so yeah, it functions like ADD. Somebody might have ADD and it could show up that way. Um, I mean, I'm not diagnosed ADD, but I'm certainly bonking all over the place. It's amazing that I never miss a deadline, but I'm like a pinball machine on my way there. Let me tell you, that is true. So, um, also, people, many, more than half of my clients have fingerprints in their palms. If you'll notice, that big circle down in the outer lower corner is a fingerprint. Yeah. Can you see that? Sure enough. Very cool. And there's also, if you look really closely, there's one up at the top in between my ring finger and my middle finger. It's kind of a loop hanging oh, down. Yeah. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And then if you have a really good eye, you might be able to see one in this area right here, which is very rare. Um, and um, those all mean something. Any, they all mean something. Um, so, and then back to the gift markings. These circles, most of them, are different types of gift markings. There's only 18 possible. So I'm gonna contradict myself here because I said they are very rare. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to attract people with gift markings and my teacher had to tell me 10 times because I'd say, but you keep saying they're rare, but everybody I talk to has got gift markings. She goes, that's you. That's, you're attracting people that have gift markings. So they're still rare. You know, if you take every human on the planet, far more than half do not have a gift mark. I'm like, okay, okay. So I probably had three clients out of, I'm going to guess 1,600, who did not have gift markings. And one was the, the director level in this company in Virginia that was just so blown away by this work. and. Um, got it for his team and stuff and um, does a great job and it has nothing to do with how smart you are or anything like that. Like I said, gift markings are double-edged sword, but they do mean you're gifted. They do mean you're gifted. So, any questions before I, because I want to do a few. Well, what does it mean if you have a long left line? You said it means if it's short, but what if it's long? It has nothing to do with the length of your life. It depends on where it goes. So okay. if it's really tight and curves really tight back in under your thumb, mm -hmm then that's called a tight leash. And it means that, that you're kind of, um, your family's holding on to you in a way. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't this work amazing? I mean, people just, I just have to trust what I see, you know, and I'm like, really? And then I tell them and they're like, oh my God, of course. I'm like, okay. Um, I yes, Kim. I noticed that you, I was, 
surprised, I guess, that you were reading both hands mm -hmm. different. You know, I thought they were both the same. Not at all. That you would read both of them. No. Nope. I have to see both or I'm only seeing half of you. Oh. So some people, like I tend, mm -hmm. I have the same heart lines on both hands, but that's not, I don't know what, it's probably half and half. The people have the same heart lines on both hands or have one different on one hand and one on the other. Anyway, so, um, so this, there is, People who use it by now ask me how much this cost. So that's on the back. And um, when I speak, that's the lowest I ever offer it. Now, this is a little tricky with the live stream because usually I'm like, this is for today. It's for fast action takers. Um, but with the live stream, that's going to add a little kink. So I'm not really sure how they to got till noon. Give them till noon. Well, they can have till midnight. Okay. But, but they got to get to me by midnight. Um, and if you get one today before you leave, I'll hand you your kit. Otherwise, if you wait till later, then I have to mail it and it takes longer. And yet it has in it everything you need. And what I look for are prints like this. And then we get on a Zoom call and a video, and I can show you all the markings I'm talking about. Recording, record it, you get the recording, you get the hour call, you get a summer report, and a 30-minute integration call because there's going to be a ton of information coming at you to help you integrate it and answer questions and digest it more and figure out what your next steps will be to take action on the information. So it's a huge value, 297, that's, that's really low. So last year it was 397. So this year I'm like, I gotta get more people in here. How can I help if I, you know, so anyway, so that's there for you. Um, all right, who wants a little mini room? Right. Ben, close up. <laughs> ben wants a mini ring. You're volunteering, Ben. No, I'm no, volunteering me, but I want the camera to do a close up. Oh! All right. So I people can see it. the hands. Yeah, I don't want to do it upside down. So. All right, sit next to me. Sit behind me. I'm going to stand right here and cover. Okay, so, and you may want to record this on your phone because it's only going to be three minutes, but you will not remember it all. Oh. And it's about 1% of what's in your hands. That's how much stuff is in your hands. How much? All right, hold on. All right, start. Okay, Paul. So yes, Hermit, Big Heart, you have very high self-expectations of yourself, so don't beat yourself up so much. Um, you have a fingerprint up here, and when there's a fingerprint between the two fingers, we take the meaning of the two fingers and combine it. So this is your right hand. This is artist in the spotlight, and this is um, public message, speaking, writing. So it's called artist with a message in the spotlight, which means you've got to get your work out there, you know, in front of people. And I don't know where it places, but it's just part of who you are, right? right. So I doubt if it's part of your purpose, but it definitely is part of who you are. Um, okay, so... Trusting your gut, you have a lot of natural intuition, but trusting it's challenging for you. So the more you can work on that, and you know, I mean, things like meditation, and everybody's like, oh God, but that's really the best way. It just helps your mind practice being quiet. So when intuition tries to come through, you can hear it. But you have a lot of natural um, gutness, if I can say that. See, and here's yes. another intuitive mark, which is called a ring of Solomon, which is like x-ray vision into people. You can see truth, or BS, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. right? Depends on who I look at. Well, it's who you are. Yeah, yeah. So let's see what else you got going here. Okay, gift marking in here. This area of your hand, this kind of triangle above your thumb and inside your lifeline, is um, called Mars, which is the masculine area of the hand. Mars was the god of war. So a uh, gift marking in here is an indication on the master path of exceptional courage. And it doesn't mean you won't feel fear. It means you have what it takes to push through that fear and take the action and take the risk that you're meant to take. It also means you're meant to advocate for the underdog, whatever underdog is meaningful for you. And the student path, and when I, do, when I find this on women, I call it lady balls. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, but the student path is not taking that action. You know, not advocating can also be anger issues because it's the masculine part of the hand. Um, let's see what else we got here. Oh, you have an adventure line. So you, you would be one who would really enjoy travel. And, and adventure doesn't have to be, you know, 
going down the Amazon, um, but you would like that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know that? Oh, yeah. Yourself? yeah, okay. Um, has everything rung true so far? Yeah, everything's yeah. been pretty up. Yeah. spot on. Uh, gift marking here as well, which is called, has a couple of nicknames. One, the gifted healer, um, which me, could be hands-on healing like a doctor, energy work, massage, whatever, but it's also called the coach counselor. So it means the gift is access to intuitive psychological insights about people that you're meant to share a lot, like a coach. And, um, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> you can keep and, going. But with, yeah, with, <laughs> with permission. So um, people have probably come to you for advice your whole life mm -hmm. because they sense this about you and uh, you're meant to share. So if somebody asks you for advice, you have permission. As a coach, I have implied permission. Otherwise, if a friend is just bitching about something um, and you can see that they're contributing but they don't see that, you're still meant to share it, but with something like, well, I have a thought that might be helpful. Would you like to hear it? But you've got to share it because the student path of that gift marking is um, intimacy challenges, starting with yourself, which is where all our stuff starts, and then it can impact relationships, so it's real important to share those insights. Okay. Thank now, you. the other hand for three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Golly, <Thanks>. gluttons. <laughs> okay, who's next? Okay, all right, Karen. But you could take it uh, Actually, if you guys could run up here, that would okay. really be helpful. Uh, because I, I don't know if we have time. So let's do Karen, one more on the, the live stream, and then we'll wrap up. Okay, good enough. Time. All right. So, yeah, because the live stream needs to see this sort of, right? So yeah, that's why I wanted Karen. Ben yeah. to oh, zoom in. Oh, okay. No. Okay. All right. Here we go. Hands. Oh yeah, passionate, acting like a big heart. <laughs> For sure. Um, see, I told you there's commonalities in groups. Of course, this is your left hand because you have a big fingerprint here. And I'm left-handed, if that helps. It won't change the meaning of that print, but mm -hmm. it does tell me some things, yes. Um, so this is an innovator. Mm -hmm. That's what this finger means, and this is the healer. So this print means innovative healer. So it's helping people on the inside through your own ways, your own mm -hmm. methods. It's inspired communications, sort of. Okay. Um, but in a, And I don't know where that stands in terms of... Um, so it wouldn't... It would not be your official purpose, but um, certainly part of who you are and your expression. You have a travel adventure line too. See, this is amazing to me when I see this. I'm just, now I'm going, okay, let me see if she's got a Mars star. Uh, <laughs> you have lady balls. <laughs> <laughs> you know that about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people are like, no, I, when I got mine, she's like, wow, you got print in your Mars, you got movement, all this stuff in Mars, you're really brave. And I'm, no, I'm not. He goes, how many times? I'm taking your time. We'll come back. <laughs> so I'm going to go a little bit longer here. So some of your, you have a lot, a lot of creativity. Mm -hmm. um, a, an invested line of talent that really wants to be a professional line of talent, but in any event, very creative, should be being paid for some of it, mm -hmm. and would likely be most satisfied if you were involved in the ground floor. Do you know what I mean by that? So like if you like to sing, you would even be happier if you wrote lyrics and the music. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, director and producer and actor, right? So that's Got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you have a gift marking down here as well. Can I explain that. Yeah. Okay. Um, this area is called Neptune, and uh, it has two nicknames: the empath. So, do you know that you're empathic? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, it also means you have great levels of empathy. Mm -hmm. The other nickname is the hospice worker. So it doesn't mean you're supposed to be a hospice worker, but you could be. I mean, you have that. I don't want to be. <laughs> That's fine, but you've got that experience. <laughs> okay. Well, it was probably somebody really close to you. Yes, it was. But, um, but can you see the side of it that was a blessing, that you were there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have the inner strength and the depth of empathy to help people through deep emotional transition. It doesn't have to be life to death, but it could include that. Okay. And the student path, if you're not using this enough, is um, being stuck in your own grief and sadness enough that you need help getting out. Mm -hmm. So, and by help, I mean you know professional help with everybody needs every adult at least a half a dozen times. Okay, that's that's what I really believe. All right, I'm gonna go a little bit longer because I started. 
got a little off track. Um, this is another gift marking, and it's called um, a line of Persephone. And in mythology, Persephone was captured by the god of the underworld, Hades, and taken down, you know, kidnapped. Mm -hmm. And she could only come up once a year, and when she came up, she would bring other lost souls with her. This is called the Guide to Lost Souls. With those two markings, Karen, you're really meant to help people in a deep way, mm -hmm. or you're never going to feel on track okay. in a deep way. I totally forget what you do, but um, anyway, so that would be important for you. And you have a headline split, which is, um, it means you can be very fair and just because you see both sides of things, mm -hmm. and you can lose people in conversation because you change tracks and they're like, oh. Mm -hmm. And um, it also means you can have some decision challenges because you pro and con yourself to death, mm -hmm. seeing both sides of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can see that. I can right. see that. Okay. There you go. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That's so cute. It has a little thing. Yeah, just like the old fashioned yeah. tape recorder. <laughs> what is that? I remember those. Mm -hmm. Aging myself. Okay. So I'll stay longer. Am I officially closing this well, now? Yeah, we'll wrap it up real quick. But okay. um, thank you all for coming and all for the Facebook people. We're going to, we aren't going to take any questions because we're going to take them all afterwards to do kind of the readings here for as long as Jane's willing to stay. Um, but do you guys have any specific questions for her on how to move forward with her? Um, she has the reading special here. Um, so for the Facebook people, um, we will get this posted or you can comment on it and get access to that as well. Um, so I want to say thank you for being here. And, oh, my pleasure uh, entirely. It's, the science is freaky. It is. <laughs> <it? laughs> and that really, truly is. I, integrity is all over in my hands. That is the lowest price I ever offered, period. So um, jump on it, because it'll change your life. That's what I do. I change people's lives. I'm so lucky that I found this. Thank you so much. I hope you had as much fun as I did. All right. And for all the Facebook Live people, um, reach out, comment, um, make sure you get the contact information. Um, this is put on by a couple of allies that we didn't do to our full-on commercials. Um, so uh, Jane today is an ally, so she is our speaker ally for the day. So uh, we appreciate you being here, and hopefully we'll have you back at this and other locations. I would love um, it. To get more details or get it in front of new people as well. So. Um, awesome. Zoe is representing Switchboard Networking Boutique, uh, who is our host ally, so do a quick little commercial for them. Yes, Switchboard Networking Boutique, as you can see behind me, is absolutely wonderful. We have both networking events and fun shopping opportunities for many <laughs> local <laughs> vendors. What um, a fan are you? Absolutely. Yes. Oh, I really yes. am such a huge fan. Some of my own clients I have in here. But uh, I love Switchboard Networking Boutique because we are able to connect together and all of our local vendors have that special connection with our community. We are so lucky to have this place. Thank you, Connie, who is uh, the founder and she is out speaking right now, couldn't be here. Um, and myself, my name is Zoe. I'm standing in today for Connie, but what I do is separate from this. I help other solopreneurs with their online marketing front because I believe that they do not need a digital marketing team to be successful online. To interact with me, leave a comment below. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. And Ben, so if you want to grab the camera for Ben, Ben can come yes. up and do his little, okay, he doesn't want to. He doesn't trust over this phone. <laughs> All right, well, I am uh, Paul Socek. I work with a company called Team National, and what I do is help people bring more revenue or income into their lives and cut their expenses. I'm not a financial planner. I'm not a tax guy. I'm not any of those certified things that bore most people. Um, I help people figure out how they can bring more money in by marketing or through side income and how to cut all their expenses because we partner with about 10,000 different people. So if you know somebody that's always looking for that little side thing to make a better vacation, a better family life, a newer car, or if you know people that are struggling, they're not finding the customers they need for their business, payroll's eating them alive, credit card fees eating them alive, or just they want that new car for their business, we can help them do all that and replace that beater truck. So that's what I do is help people really uh, streamline their finances, uh, but not in any kind of professional way. It's all through partnerships that we have. So that's what I do. So um, again, thank you to all the Facebook Live people for attending. Um, if you were here, you'd get to network and maybe even get a hand reading, hand analysis, not reading. It's okay. It's okay? Okay. Just don't say um, <laughs> it's not a palm reading, but a hand analysis here is going on here. So I'm going to say goodbye to the Facebook people, and then in the room we're going to be networking for the next uh, half hour or whatever it is.